All right, all right, all right. Welcome back to another episode of the Conversations with Chris podcast. And this is your host, Chris McCormick. And uh, this episode is going to be a special one, man. I am coming off of a historic weekend in my life. Um, I recently returned back from Waco, Texas, where I was competing in an Ironman triathlon, swimming 2.4 miles, biking 112 miles, and running 26.2 miles. And uh, it was quite the accomplishment. It was quite the experience. Uh, I'm very grateful to have been able to go there and compete. And not only did we compete, but we placed fourth in the 29, 25 to 29 age group, placed 29th overall and qualified for a world championship bid in Kona, Hawaii. So to say that I'm excited is an understatement. To say that I am grateful is an understatement. Man, um, there have been an outpouring of love and messages and uh, just encouragement. And I receive all that and I, I appreciate all that. And most notably, I want to give a shout out to my mother, uh, Janet McCormick. She ventured all the way down to Texas uh, to watch and cheer me on. And I really have no idea how I would have fared had she not been there. You know, during the training, I wasn't sure who would be there. There's been a lot of uh, change in my life in, in recent months, and I just wasn't sure where it would end up. But by the grace of God, uh, my mom went down. I know my dad wishes he was down there too, but all my family was uh, following along virtually, which also kept me going. And uh, yeah, shout out to everybody who was and all those who have also reached out since then. But uh, this episode serves as a recap. You know, there's a lot to go over. And um, to say that I learned a lot about myself, about the sport, about the mind over these past six months from training, uh, from committing to it, from training, and then to actually racing. Um, there's been... <laughs> There's been a lot going on and there's a lot to think about. So today's episode is a way for, for me to gather some of those thoughts and, and provide some of those thoughts to you, the listener. Um, there's, like I said, a lot. So I'm not sure how this is going to go, but I do have a list of a couple things that I, I do want to touch upon. Um, so for starters, I appreciate you all listening and um, yeah, let's get to it. First things first, I, I do want to reiterate the amount of gratitude that I have for all the people following along and all the people that have reached out. You know, it's it's awesome to, to go out there and race and prove to yourself that you're uh, willing and able to do these challenges, but also to, to receive some of the feedback from others and to feel the impact that it's made on other people's lives is... is um, all the more rewarding, you know, and that's why I'm doing some of these things is to, to, to have a big impact on the lives of others. You know, it's great to go out and achieve things for yourself, but if it's not impacting anyone else, then what's the point? And I saw and have seen the impact that it's had on others just through messages. And, uh, and I appreciate that. And I just, uh, encourage you all to keep going and, and keep pushing yourself and and strive to, to be the best version of yourself, whether that's in athletics, um, business, studies, whatever it is, you know, we can all um, set out to, to be the best possible version of ourselves. And that's different for everyone. But um, that's ultimately the goal of my life is to just bring that out of everybody and anybody. And uh, I think this was a step in the right direction. So um, shout out to you all. The first point that I want to go over um, is this idea that the enemy is persistent. You know, in the Bible, they talk about the enemy in the form of the devil and how it, he comes and 
uh, tempts you. He, he tries to convince you of things that are not based on truth. And ultimately, uh, I felt that not only in the race, but leading up to the race. Um, there were some, some things going on in my life. Personally, I, I uh, made some mistakes leading up to the, the race, and it, it had me thinking about pulling out and not actually competing, you know? Um, that voice in my head was telling me, well, you already worked, like you're, you're already worked yourself up. You're, you're in the physical capability of being an Ironman. What's the point of actually going out there and doing it if it's not um, still on your heart? But <laughs> truth be told, it was very much on my heart. And uh, that's what I mean is that the enemy is persistent, that 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 voice was not the voice that I should be listening to. And it almost got me, man. It, it, it was, I was very close the weekend leading up to it. I was having conversations with my family and friends saying that I'm not sure I'm going to, to go through with it. And luckily by the grace of God, they're all like, you're crazy. <laughs> you better freaking go for it. Cause you've worked six months for this. And, and, um, ultimately I did decide to go and, uh, compete and, Thank God I did, because now I have a newfound light, and uh, it's opening up doors that would not have been opened had I not gone down there. So, uh, grace to God for that. Thank you to God and all those who encouraged me to do that. But ultimately, um, what I want you, the listener, to know is that that voice doesn't go away. And um, even in the race, it comes up, I think, even more so in the race, you know, it's like, what are you doing? This is crazy. Um, it, it tells you that you have so much further to go in the race and, and in life as well. And uh, the ultimate the ultimate decision that you have to make is to not listen to it. And um, every time that, that, that voice creeped up, I would uh, kind of laugh it off and put a big smile on my face. And that brings me to the, the second point, which is joy over everything, you know, and shout out to uh, Connor Mann, who we had on the podcast earlier this year. Um, he too ran an Ironman and uh, he was the one who, who told me just enjoy it, man, just have fun. Uh, there's gonna be times where, where you question what you are doing um, and that is no understatement. You know, you're out there for 10, 11, 12 hours and uh, you got nothing to think about but what, what's right in front of you. And if you're not enjoying it, then man, you're gonna have a tough day. And I saw this firsthand, um, you know, when you're running the marathon, you're running, it's a, it was like a eight mile loop, I think maybe eight and a half mile loop and you run it three times. And, and by the second loop, um, there were people that had just finished the bike on their first loop and you could hear them talking. And I overheard some conversations of people complaining about the bike course and, and talking about the hills that were on, on the course. And I mean, I don't blame them, man. It was a tough course and it's a tough race. And, um, there's no, there's no short sell in the fact that that that's a, that's no easy feat, but if you spend your time, on the course complaining and not in a state of joy, then it's just gonna make it a whole lot worse. But if you choose joy, then you can shift your mindset to say, wow, this is an incredible accomplishment. We are doing something that not many people get to do. And I have no other option but to be happy and to, to, to enjoy this because one, you're, you're blessed to be able to do it. You know, another thing that that you see when you're on the course, well, I saw, and I, I guess it's a familiar thing throughout the Ironman community, is that sometimes there's bikers and participants who pull paraplegics behind them. And I saw it on the bike course. Um, there was one man biking with somebody in a, a wheelchair or a modified bike seat behind him. And 
um, when you see that, you're like, okay, well, uh, what do I have to complain about? And two, how great is it that, that we are able to move our bodies in this way and push ourselves to this limit and not even think twice about it. You know, some people don't have the ability to walk or run or they're just not, they're physically not capable of getting out there and doing it. And um, it's when you see that and you're reminded of that, there's there's a sense of gratitude that comes over you. There's a sense of motivation and inspiration. And you're like, all right, if, if they can do this with an added 200 pounds behind them, then um, I think I'm capable of doing this. So I say that to to instill the point that, that there is so much to be grateful for. And if you have breath in your lungs, if you have vision in your eyes, um, you have the ability to walk, to feel, to taste. Like that, those are things we don't even think about, but there's people out there that, that don't do that. And uh, that's something to be to be grateful for and, and to just find, it's the little things in life that you can just find joy in, you know? And sometimes it takes you going on this, this crazy uh, physical endurance challenge to remind yourself of these things because, um, you know, we have it pretty darn good these days. And, and um, in previous episodes, I've kind of strayed away from that that mantra but but thankfully I'm back back on track and and now understand how good we have it how lucky we are to to go out there and do some of these things and even if you're not going out there to do some of these things I guarantee you that if you have a roof over your heads if you have the ability to hear this voice right now given the technology that you're using then there is a lot in your life to be grateful for and and we can all benefit ourselves by choosing joy, choosing grace, and and really just just finding the the, the blessings that are around us. Um, yeah. So the next point, the next point I want to make is is that it is you versus you, and. This kind of goes in line with the, the two voices in your head. You know, you have the voice of, of truth and the voice of lies, the voice of uh, power and the voice of excuses. Um, there's a book out there um, that I do have on this bookshelf somewhere. And I think it's titled the war of art and in it the author who i'm blanking on the name talks about resistance and resistance being the enemy and that goes hand in hand with the bible which calls it the devil you know if you listen to david goggins he talks about goggins versus david kind of thing um but truth be told is that we we both have we all have voices in our head that either empower us or disempower us and that's what I want to get at when I say you versus you and you have that voice that can empower you that can say this is an amazing accomplishment just keep moving keep going keep fighting and then there's the other voice that says this is impossible what are you doing this bike course is is terrible that there's so many hills on this run and so you have to be able to, to, to overcome that disempowering voice and the voice that, that wants to hold you back and listen, but also encourage that voice of reason and that voice of truth and that voice of power that says, keep going, man, like keep moving. All you have to do is, is take that next step, pedal that next pedal, swim that next stroke, and you will eventually get to the finish line. So this goes for anything in life. It's you versus you, whether it's in business, you know, I've struggled recently with the business side of things where I'm like, is, is this where I want to be? Is this what I want to be doing? And whether or not that's the case, it doesn't help me very much to to say that it's 
not what I want to be doing because that will just lead me to, to going down this dark hole of, of excuses, of questions, rather than lifting myself up and saying, this is a, a blessing to be able to, to run your own company, to be in business for yourself, to go out there and, and make money. And so when that voice comes up that says, stop doing what you're doing, there is no reason for this, you know, you can go on and be perfectly fine without pushing yourself to these limits. It, I, you just got to do your best to ignore it and overcome it and, and choose the path of the greatest reward. And for me, getting to that finish line was the path of the greatest reward. And maybe it's not going out and running an Ironman. Maybe it's just going out and exercising five days a week or running a 5k or lifting a certain amount of weight or doing a certain number of push-ups, like whatever it is that you think will empower you and get you closer to a person that you enjoy being, do it and empower yourself and listen to the voice that tells you that that's something that you should take on. And so you versus you, I mean, this goes all the way back to when I started and committed to this Ironman. I was, I told myself I was going to do it. And then I told myself I wasn't going to do it. And then I, I told myself I need to do it. And ultimately, I made the decision, took the leap, and just did it. But had I not listened to the voice that said, I, I need to do it. And I said, well, I, I don't need to, like, I could, could wait another year. And, um, Iron Man will still be around, and that's true, but I would have been another year older, I would have been, I mean, there would have been more experiences under my belt, and, and things that, if you, if you think about the law, there would have been a lot more excuses, because I had already made an, made an excuse once, so, um, I want to bring this back to the you versus you, the idea being that is that, that nothing in life is going to come easy, but if we listen to the voice that empowers us and tells us to get to that finish line, to keep moving forward, and to keep going after what you want to go after, well, that's going to to reap the rewards that, that we hope for. And for me, that was getting to the finish line. That was a finish far greater than I could have ever imagined. That was qualifying for the world championships. Like, that's that's an awesome accomplishment and I'm, I'm very grateful for that opportunity. But if I did not go for it and, and start and take that first step and, and going and listening to the voice that told me to do it, then we'd be having a completely different conversation. And who knows, maybe I would have <laughs> stopped doing the podcast or like, it's just, it's crazy to think about what could have happened had I not set out on this journey, and I'm very grateful that I have. The next thing I want to, to, to touch upon is the idea that you start small. And um, if you're just tuning in for the first time, it's probably beneficial to know that I have not always been much of an athlete. I haven't always prioritized my physical and mental well-being. I have not always valued health. And um, it goes back to, to, to college four years ago, five years ago, when we were doing the things that most people or do in college, or you're told that is, is the norm in college in the form of partying and, and going out and having a good time. But, but also not really considering the consequences of that. And so when I say start small, I think back to, to three years ago, four years ago, when I started out on this health journey and, and prioritizing my mental and physical well-being. And I mean, it all started with a 5k it really is um, the story we, in my family, we do 
a a 5k to raise awareness for ALS in honor of our dear Aunt Mary and um that was really what what started it is that that I would compete in that and not compete in a way where I would <laughs> come anywhere near the top of the finishers but I would compete in the fact that I would go out there and run a 5k and, and tell myself just run don't stop just keep going and get to that finish line and and I would do that and I would probably finish somewhere in the 24 to 25 minute range which is a decent time but I wasn't in any physical shape you know that would that would knock me out and I would feel like crap after it and and uh it wasn't anything to to write home about but the thing is is that where that's where it started I realized that 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 was beneficial to my physical and mental well-being and then fast forward to 2018 when I was in grad school and I I said okay I'm not happy with where I am it's time to make some changes let's prioritize positive habits in the form of waking up early getting to the gym sweating and and just starting to to value the well-being of yourself and just getting to the gym every morning seemed easy enough but had I been thinking about an Ironman triathlon I probably would have lost some confidence you know it was always in the back of my head I, I had read David Goggins book and he talked about it I was like whoa that's pretty cool like maybe that's something we can do eventually and I thought that maybe that meant like 10 years from now but um things started to to take shape I started to gain momentum I um set out to to run a half marathon back in 2019 um then set out to run a marathon in 2020 I I came up on 2021 and I did another marathon and and the four by four by 48 challenge and then I started to realize that there's something to be said about setting out and achieving these goals and the ultimate goal for me was an Ironman triathlon and so here we are in October of 2021 and we just finished it and, and that's that's an awesome <laughs> it's an awesome feeling and, and to reflect back on how this all started is pretty amazing and so I encourage you the listener if you have aspirations to go out there and, and do something big and, and, and scary and, and you have this audacious goal, start small. And I think I'm also realizing this in the business world is that it's great to, to say that you want to go out and, and make all this money and have all this impact. But if you just see that and you don't see all of the efforts that that need to come before that then it's going to seem like it's it's impossible so start small take continuous daily action and at some point you're going to have to make that leap but but it's probably going to be a lot sooner than you realize and it's also going to be a great feeling when you do eventually cross that finish line and and you realize all that those efforts that you are putting in now were worth it and i mentioned the finish line and that brings me to my final point and well one of the final points i guess there's two more and if i run out of time then maybe i won't get to the last one but this, this next point is the fact that there is no finish line. And this is something that I've touched upon in the past. And to some, it might be, it might seem a little dismal, but for me, it's kind of empowering. And I hope I can create that picture as well, is that, that we crossed that finish line in Waco in a time better than, than I could have imagined and with results better than I could have imagined, but we're still 
in the beginning stages of our life and, and we're still considering what our options are and, and where to go next. And so I say there is no finish line because it's it's awesome to cross that finish line and, and achieve something that, that you have set out to achieve and that, that very few people get to achieve. But at the end of the day, you're still the same person and, and you still have these questions that, that you're looking to be answered, you still have to have a future to think about. And um, when I say there is no finish line, it's it's just that. It's that, that just because we cross that finish line doesn't mean that, that life is over and, and we have nothing left to accomplish. You know, there's still a lot more that needs to be done in, in my life and in this, this world that we're were gifted. So while I, I am grateful for the opportunity to cross that finish line and I will now use it as, as something to look back upon when I do face another challenge and say, man, if you can do that, like you can do this, whatever this is. And so I think that's what the benefit is. Don't, don't see there is no finish line as a, a dismal way of looking at life, but understand that when you cross that finish line, you are still going to be faced with the rest of your life and what you do by challenging yourself like that is you create something uh, to use David Goggins cookie jar mentality is you create a, a cookie to look back upon where you can reach into the jar and pull it out and say, oh, yes, I did an Ironman. Like I am fully capable of going out there and running a business or overcoming this problem in my relationship or solving this, this issue that stands in front of me. Like it, if you are able to, to challenge yourself in one realm of your life, then that translates to another realm of your life. So what we do when we're setting out for these things is we're, we're kind of building that foundation. We're laying that foundation to then go up and build upon and, and go out and, and seek out the next challenge or, or the next opportunity. And it, it ultimately will culminate into this, this grand operation that we don't exactly know what the end result is, but, but it's something that we can look back upon and be like, okay, that was, that was pretty good. And that's, that's what we did here, you know? So, I mean, currently doing it now as, as I have achieved this, this Ironman, I'm looking back upon the four years that, that came before it and, and the 25 years that came before it and, and thinking, okay, well, that's pretty cool. Like that all, played a part into me getting right here. And so I I pray and believe that, that five years from now, I'll be in a, a much better situation. And I'll look back and say, wow, if it weren't for that Ironman, this wouldn't have taken place. If it weren't for the marathon, that wouldn't have happened. And, and so that's what I mean by while there is no finish line, we use the finish lines of the the various races that we're running as a way to lift ourselves up to that next opportunity and that next challenge. And so I will close with this. And it's the last point I have is heart over equipment. And another thing I say is do the verb rather than being the noun, you know, put in the work and train to become an Ironman. Don't worry too much about the the expenses and and the 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 material items you know i i was able to do all that with a a, a road bike that i was gifted from my great friend and cousin jimmy and i just put some makeshift bars on top and, and i i was able to go out there you don't need the best equipment out there it's more important to to train yourself and prepare than it is to have all the nice things. And while for the next races, I intend to to probably get into the, the great equipment for now, 
I do not. I appreciate. That last clip got cut off. I just want to, to close by saying that I appreciate you all listening. Um, this was one of the longer episodes. I'm going to work to, to make it flow as best we can, but man, it's, a uh, it's quite a feeling to be, to be done with that and to, to think about everything that played a role and everyone that pr played a role. Um, because while triathlon is an independent sport, there are so many people that play a role in you getting to where you are. And I would be remiss if I did not give a shout out to my coach, Tony Rich, over at Event Horizon TV. Um, something tells me this is not the last you hear about it. If you have not seen the episode with Tony, uh, I encourage you to go check that out. Um, but I do intend to be uh, aligning myself with Tony for the foreseeable future as, as I do think I have found something that that can carry me to, to where I want to go and where I can be of the greatest value to all of you. So God bless you. God love you. I will talk to you all soon, but really appreciate you listening in. And if you have any questions or comments on the Ironman, on the podcast, anything else, do not hesitate to reach out. I would love to hear some feedback and uh, let you know what you all think. Have a great rest of the week. Talk to you soon.